Welcome to Barbell Cooking. Today we're doing biscuits, southern style. A good friend of the channel asked that I do this video because she has an old recipe that's been handed down. It's a bit garbled. Technique doesn't make sense, the ingredients are somewhat unclear, so she asked if I could clear it up. Not a problem. Biscuits are easy. They're cheap. They can be on the table in 30 minutes or less, and they're a quick bread, which means they're chemically leavened. Um, they're kind of carb heavy, so I don't do them very often, but they are what I would call a decadent pleasure. Let me show you how it's done. Southern style buttermilk biscuits goes like this. Now, I have made this recipe so many times that I have it memorized. Um, my mother used to make it for me all the time. She was from Alabama, my grandmother too. And this is kind of how it went, although they used a mix sometimes that starts with bis and ends with something that's fast, if you take my meaning. Uh, I think that stuff is an absolute abomination. This is two cups of King Arthur's all-purpose flour, or nine ounces. Now, I know to measure it out by weight for nine ounces because I looked it up on the King Arthur's website and their flour, their AP flour, all-purpose flour, rather, ends up being about four and a half ounces per cup. I prefer to measure it because it's a little more accurate. That goes into the bowl like this. And since this is chemically leavened, what we do is we add a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of just regular old Morton salt. Doesn't have to be exact. Get it close. Give that a mix. This is a pattern I've noticed in a lot of quick breads. Per cup of flour, usually, you end up with a half teaspoon each of baking soda if you're using it to cut the acid out. In this case, we're using buttermilk, so that's what it's for, and it also provides lift. Do these motherfuckers even fucking lift? Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder. This is two cups, so the only thing that's not in a full teaspoon is the baking soda because we're using one cup of buttermilk. If it were a batter and we were using, say, two cups of buttermilk, we'd have two teaspoons or a full teaspoon of baking soda instead of two half teaspoons, rather. Now we're going to cut in the butter. This is one half stick of unsalted butter. You want to use unsalted. The reason you use unsalted butter is because the flour already has salt in it. It would throw the salt ratio off. Now, I've seen other recipes where you freeze this, run it through a grater so it makes a little shards, and then you fold the biscuit dough with that. But this is the way I was taught to do it. It works just as well, in my opinion. And what you do is you just kind of start cutting your butter up like this. I've seen people use uh, pastry cutters for this as well. But I've never really found one of those that I like. So just cut it up into manageable pieces, like that. And then start working it with your fingers. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to flatten it out and make like a little disc of butter, kind of like that. This process is really similar to making a pie crust. Now when you get toward the end like I'm doing here, you run it through your hands like this. And it just kind of flattens it out. If you end up with a couple pieces that are left over that are still kind of large, it's really not going to hurt anything, but it'll hit a steam and might run a bit. You'll see what I mean in a minute. There, we're just about there. And you see how these flakes of butter that throughout the dough. There. Now we're going to add the buttermilk. This is one cup of Bulgarian style buttermilk. Bulgarian style means it's a little thicker and it has a higher fat content. In this case, it's 3%. I get this from a local company called Dairy Gold. So you just add that in like that and you just mix it up. Now, the clock is ticking. Because what happens right now is that acid in the buttermilk is reacting with the baking soda. And so you are now on the clock. And don't be afraid to use a liberal amount of flour here.
You don't really have to worry about working it so much, but this is a crucial part if you want flaky biscuits. <laughs> Use a dough scraper or something similar, and you're going to fold it over on itself. And each time you do that, you're going to dust the top with flour, and then you're going to fold it over in on itself again. You're going to do this about four times, five times. I wouldn't go any more than that. So that's two. That would be three. This is number four. And the resistance I'm getting from the dough, you see that now? I think I'm going to call it here. I'm going to call it good. I'm going to use my scraper to get that loose underneath. And then you're going to press it out to probably just about, I don't know, half an inch thick. Like I said, this is a recipe I've done a billion times. I have it memorized. I kind of go by feel more than anything else. Now, this is a biscuit cutter. You can get this at just about any kitchen store. But if you don't have one of these, or you don't want to buy one, you can just as easily use your dough scraper to cut these things into squares, and that'll work just as well. So make sure your top's dusted here. Put the ring down, push it down, do not twist. If you twist it, it's going to cause it to rise unevenly. You pull it straight up like that. So, and then what you do is you move them to your baking sheet. Then gather this up again, pat it out. This part's called taking out the trash. Now each time you do this, it's going to get stiffer. So what I like to do is I like to try to pat it out longer than I do wider. Even that might be just a bit thin. But in this case, I should be able to get three. biscuits out of this. Now at the end of this you're always going to end up with one that's somewhat oddly shaped and that's fine. Lady Barbell really likes that one. She always snatches it off the baking tray when I make these. Let's see if I can get this out wider so I can get two. But you see how much thinner I made this. And biscuits are rustic. They don't have to be perfect. If they stick, just use your bench scraper to get that off. And then, like I said, the last one. Just roll it up like that. Pat it out. And lay it on there. Another thing you can do so they rise more evenly is to use your thumb and just make a depression right in the center. Because as the heat goes in, it'll go in like this, and that will be the last part to rise. So now this goes into a 450 degree preheated oven for 18 to 20 minutes. Keep an eye on it after 15 minutes because you don't want the tops to get too brown. But it's up to you, your liking. So let's bake these off. And we're done. Doesn't look too bad. I pulled these about minute 19. At minute 9, I flipped them around in the oven so they'd bake a little bit more evenly. Bottoms are a little browner than I expected, but then again, I noticed that my oven rack was sitting kind of low in the oven. If I moved it up toward the middle, it probably would have mitigated that. But you can see they are flaky. They pull apart easy. Light and fluffy on the inside. It's the stuff dreams are made of. Well, let's see how we did. Mmm, flaky, buttery, you know, I could eat that. Till the sky turns black. However, I digress. These would be good with jam. You certainly don't need any more butter. Piece of ham, cheese, sausage, make a little sandwich out of it. Wonderful. 
I'll see you next time on Barbell Cooking. I'm gonna eat the rest of this.